Hello everyone, this is Giuseppe Sark, and in this video we're going to be going over access control issues in GraphQL. GraphQL is an API query language, and it typically uses JSON formatted requests from a client, that being your browser, to a server which contains all the data types referenced in the client's request. Uh, the kinds of requests a client can issue are queries, mutations, and subscriptions. So if you think of like a CRUD application, create, read, update, delete, queries in GraphQL are the read, and mutations are the create, update, and delete. Subscriptions are kind of like queries, only they establish a persistent connection to the server so that it can push data to the client. And that's usually done over WebSockets. All of these types of requests can have access control issues depending on the implementation. As well, access controls in GraphQL can be implemented on multiple levels. So it could be there could be access controls at the level of the request, so certain clients can't send certain requests. There could be access controls at the level of an object, so certain clients can't request certain objects. And it may even be at the level of fields that belong to an object. And we'll get into a little bit about the details of, you know, fields and objects and stuff like that in a little bit. But before we worry about that, let's talk about how we can identify a GraphQL API. So I have a really basic web app here. I'm just going to refresh the page and you can see we just got guest guest here. And in Burp Suite, after we refresh the page, you can see we got the get request here. And then in the background, we issued a post request to this slash GraphQL endpoint. We have this weird looking JSON in the data of the post request. So this is um, this is immediately like like the standard endpoint that a GraphQL API is going to be hosted at. And you're going to notice that this is different from like a Swagger or a REST API in that usually for, especially for REST APIs, you're going to see like a slash API endpoint or like a slash V1, V2 or something like that endpoint. And then for each, you know, request that you want to make, each operation that you want to do, there's a specific endpoint that's associated under that general API path. Um, with, with GraphQL though, all that we're doing is sending post requests to this GraphQL endpoint and the specifics of the operation that we want to do are going to be in the key of the, uh, the, the JSON, the, the JSON data that we're sending. And this is a little bit hard to read as well, so what we can do with Burp Suite, we can actually go to the extension store and search up uh, MQL. This is a uh, this is available for the community edition as well. And this is a really fat extension as well. also, so this is gonna take up like a lot of uh, of Burp's memory. But here we go. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make this a little bit more legible for us. So I'm just gonna send this on over to Repeater. And uh, let me just, there we go. So this is actually the key that is in the, uh, all, all this stuff here. It makes it a little bit more legible to read it this way though. And what we can see is that we're making a query to an object that is called user info. And it's taking an argument called ID that has a value of two. And this looks like these are two fields that belong to the user info object, the, a username and an email. So if we send that and we check out the response, you can see we got the guest guest that, that that's what's in the web page right here. So if I ch were to change this one of uh, this two to a one, send that again, you can see we got the user info of the admin user, like his uh, username and his email. So I, I hope that kind of makes sense of like the the difference between like an object and a field that belongs to an object. And it looks like at no point are there any access controls that prevent us from issuing this request to uh, 
you know, get information about the admin user. That's not really an issue, though. There, that, that could totally be, like, a valid purpose for that in a web application. Um, what we can do, though, is try to map out all of the types of requests that we can make to the API. Uh, and that will help us, you know, facilitate a more impactful attack. So what, 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 how we can do that is by issuing an introspection query. An introspection query is basically, yeah, basically we are making a request to the schema, which is like the blueprint of the GraphQL API. And then it's going to return to us like all the objects and all the types of requests that we can make. Usually though, developers are going to disable the introspection query when they uh, when their app is in production. But let's just uh, try this anyway. Let me um, get the host, and we can actually issue an introspection query with um, with the NQL extension, just like that. And that actually looks like we've got a problem there. So let's get some more information about that. What happened here? Yeah, we got nothing there. <laughs> and this is the response that we got. We got a 403, which means we're not authorized to issue an introspection query. But now I read that as meaning that introspection is enabled and that we just need like a session token or some kind of API key or something. In this case, there's some custom thing that the developer had put in place. So what I'm going to try to do instead of using the extension is I'm going to make my own introspection query. Um, that'll look something like this. Hold on. It's schema. And then get like a new line in there, and then uh, types, and then uh, another new line, name, new line, fields, uh, should be fine, and then name, we'll just do something like that. There should be three. Sure. I don't think that's actually closing it properly, but we'll see. How does that look? Yeah. Okay. So we actually got a valid introspection query with this. Let's check that out. I got one too many of these. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so this looks like, yeah, we're getting the same error. So because it's checking for authentication, we can assume that there's some sort of filter in place that is looking for either, yeah, an authorization header or like an API key or something like that. But it may also be a, a situation where a developer may have placed like a regex that is looking for the like, you know, a, a, a the content of a post request that may indicate a introspection query. That actually is not super common, but you can see if you look up like documentation for different uh, GraphQL API libraries that certain developers do want to have like that that the ability to regex for certain queries because they want to keep introspection enabled but they want to use, they want to make sure that it's being filtered for only certain users right so if there is like a regex a regular expression that is trying to catch a string that is going to indicate a introspection query um what i would do is look for something like the underscore underscore schema because that's always going to be in every introspection query because it is referencing the schema of the API. So something that we can do, something that GraphQL does is it doesn't actually parse uh, commas, or rather it resolves commas, it replaces them with spaces. And so we can have as many spaces as we want here, and it's not going to really uh, 
affect the API at all, right? But if we were to have like a comma here, a regex that's in place may not actually catch the comma, but the GraphQL API itself is going to resolve the comma to a space. And so basically we're bypassing the regex that's in place by making our query not look like the introspection query, or at least it may not look like the string that the regex is trying to catch. So let's see how that looks. And there we go. So we can see this is the schema and this is the user object which contains the fields, email, username, ID. Oh, and there's a password field right there. That's pretty cool. We also got a mutation called user register, which means we can register a user most likely. But the uh, the password field is actually what's super interesting to me. I want to see what that looks like. And what we're going to do from here is just add a password field. And so the guest user has a null password. Cool. There's not really any access control there. Let's change it to one because that was the admin. And there we go. That looks like we got a MD5 hash of the admin's password. Now, at multiple, at, at many different levels, developers can do something to mitigate this kind of a vulnerability. Uh, it almost doesn't even really seem like a vulnerability so much as just like an oversight that there wasn't any sort of access controls uh, put in place. In fact, there are uh, when we're when we're talking about Apollo or you know other other node-based GraphQL libraries and stuff, they make it so that you can create like a custom uh, directive that makes it so that you can't request certain fields unless you have certain the right permissions and stuff. So this that kind of the mitigation for this kind of a thing is in place to where you're not going to see something this egregious super often. But it is worthwhile knowing, it is wor worthwhile to know ways that you can bypass certain protections in place to try and like prevent people from sending introspection queries. So I hope that's helpful to some of you. I hope you guys are able to find that in some bounty programs. Another thing I will say is that if you do find that a GraphQL API is uh, and it has introspection enabled in a bounty program, don't repeat, don't, don't report that. Like you're gonna want to ask, you're gonna want to make sure that you can get maximum impact from something like that. You know, see if you can find in, in, injection vulnerabilities from certain mutations or certain queries. You know, SQL injection is a thing that you can potentially find in GraphQL. I personally have found it before. Probably the craziest thing I've ever found from a GraphQL API was a XML external entity where there was like a mutation that was actually accepting uh, like JSON, JSON formatted XML, like for XML that was formatted so that it was valid JSON, which is really janky. But uh, from there, I was able to find that the XML parser in the application was allowing for externally defined uh, entities. And, you know, that, that's kind of silly. But uh, if you find that that, that a GraphQL API in a bounty program has introspection enabled, don't don't report that. They're just they're not even going to give you a bounty off of that. So all you're really going to be doing is removing the ability for other people to find vulnerabilities and and also for yourself to find more impactful stuff and potentially get more uh, better bounties uh, doing that as well. But all that being said, if you want some more information on where you can, uh, on like learning about like hacking GraphQL APIs, you can look for the damn vulnerable GraphQL application. This is by Dolev <laughs> on GitHub. You can install that locally, and this demonstrates how you can like learn um, how you can find like command injection vulnerabilities in GraphQL API. How you could find SQL injection XSS. You know the whole the whole run through and stuff. Another really good um, sort uh, source of information for just learning about hacking APIs in general is 
hacking APIs by uh, Corey Ball. This is this covers more than just GraphQL. This also uh, covers REST APIs and Swagger APIs. It goes into even things like NoSQL injection in APIs and stuff. It's pretty freaking good. I, I Easily worth the money if you're interested in learning about APIs, especially since it doesn't just focus on like bounty. It goes into, you know, mobile apps and like IoT, uh, IoT usages of like web APIs and stuff like that. It's pretty comprehensive. Um, but yeah, I hope that that's uh, enough information for y'all to chew on if you want to learn about GraphQL and other API stuff. Um, if you have any questions or something, just leave them in the comments, you know? Thanks. Okay, bye. <laughs>